coming and in. The Lorena, the Argentinian Italian mixture playing for the drum national team. <laughs> and speaking both German and Spanish and English yes. very and well. The Spanish so fast, which uh, so I make a guess it will be at least 5-0. Um, I do not make that guess. I actually think this is going to be a really tough game for both teams. But we will see. Only time will tell. Uh, so far, the Colombian team is really uh, heavily attacking the Spanish team. Some Spanish players are losing the goal. I think the Colombian players had as a goal, let's set the first goal within the first minute. Which they have uh, 15 seconds left to do for. But even after that, they probably won't give up trying to make a, a goal. We see a uh, little on the fence here. And the Colombian girls are providing wave after wave after wave on the goal. Uh, in the last uh, 20 seconds, three different Colombians with the ball attacked the goalkeeper. So it's interesting if uh, the defense of Spain can hold this up. Yeah, they're keeping the speed up, they're controlling the ball, they're passing the ball, they're attacking. They're attacking really hardly so that the goalkeeper has really to defend. And they swim uh, open. Uh, and keeping the ball under control, they're narrow enough uh, to, to attack and they always really put pressure on the goalkeeper and keeping the ball into position so that Spanish girl has no chance and that's that's the first goal within the two minutes. Yeah, well, so it was not one minute. No, so that means another four to go. Well, we'll see if the Colombians can keep up the speed or if they decided to just set the tone and make sure they will win. You like to disagree with me. Of course, we're commentating a match <laughs> here. It wouldn't be nice if we agree. <laughs> right? Right. Sometimes I appreciate that someone agrees with me. Okay, well, <laughs> not never gonna happen here. Never gonna happen. This oh. won't happen in this game. But Colombia is trying to attack here again, really quickly. You see nicely how she oh tried to push yeah. from the ground to get the extra power in it. So that's the second one. If so you are a new starter on uh, underwater rugby, I recommend you to uh, watch this goal back and see what she's actually doing. You will learn a lot from that says the one who uh, is not an expert in underwater rugby, but I will look it back and see this in slow motion. So here we see that the Colombians, they just kick out the ball of the hands of uh, the Spanish teams. So you should really practice on holding the ball so that no Colombian girl can kick out the ball. They attack uh, from... from uh from the bottom, uh, putting the, the pressure onto the goal and then bringing out the ball again to their own teammate, control the attack. So Not a really controlled attack until now. You see that the defense of the Spanish team is a bit falling apart with their really quick attacks. We see... Um, a piranha girl here now struggling to get the ball. Referees called for something. Holding uh, free flow against Katoras. I would like to uh, thank you everyone for listening. And I'm now giving up my spot for some Spanish supporting here. Thank you, Kim. See you later. Ah, Castores y Piranha. So we do it in Spanish, York. Yes, my <laughs> special <laughs> language. Now I have to s uh, put my <laughs> volume down <laughs> because uh, now Lorena will. No, but no, no. It's important because you have not just the Spanish Spanish-speaking um, uh, uh, viewers, uh, audience. A ver, cómo va Colombia? Déjenme ver cómo viene este chat. 2-0 y cinco minutos del primer tiempo. Creo que sí, claro. Las castoras eran favoritas jugando contra España 
Y eh, estamos por el partido 30, a ver, 40, ¿dónde estamos? Aquí, 42. Castores y Piranhas en los cuartos de final. Um, another goal. It's not been really difficult for Castores uh, to um, score against uh, the Spanish team. The Spanish team is quite young team. I mean, they have been in since 15 years, but uh, they had a yeah a few years where they they lost a lot of players, and now they're building up. So a lot of them never been playing internationally, and so. This is again a learning process for, for a lot of the, of the players. Vamos a ver. Um, tenemos a las chicas de España tratando de llegar a la portería de Colombia, pero ahí se cometió una falta que no pude ver. Y es un tiro libre para Colombia. Tenemos a la defensora en posición, a la portera en posición. Y eh, a ver, está la chica de Colombia viniendo con el balón. Y pidiendo por el lado abierto, pasa al centro, del centro pasa para el otro lado. Y están tratando de atacar de a dos y a tres, como han sido el caso de los últimos partidos. Las chicas de Colombia han podido mantener el balón y atacar. Siempre hemos visto que al principio están con un poquito más de distancia y se van acercando cada vez más y van presionando cada vez más y entonces van aumentando la calidad de los, de los, de los goles. ¿Puedes like decir algo? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was down when we talked about uh, Piranhas and uh, Amra uh, from uh, Denmark. Uh, at that time, uh, Lorena agrees uh, 100% what I said, so I'm making notes. So I don't know what I said, uh, but I make a note that Lorena agrees what I said. <laughs> so this is. Uh, <laughs> No, we were we were discussing about uh, uh, the intimidation. Of course, I I am a good man. We never forget. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, the uh, Colombian girls are coming from the close side. They are keeping the ball that like we've seen in the, the games before, and now they provoke oh. really uh, the force of the, the the mistake on the defense. There was the goalie alone, and they are very precise and very hard in attacking and uh, scoring. So it's four zero, and two minutes thirty seconds uh, of the first half, and. Uh, a ver, las chicas de Perena están intentando pasar la mitad de la cancha. Me he perdido los primeros minutitos del partido, o sea que no sé si han podido llegar a la portería de Colombia. Pero se les va a hacer difícil, es como nadar contra una pared, porque bueno, las chicas de Castores tienen mucha experiencia nacional e internacional. Eh, pero bueno, si bien no sé cuántos torneos internacionales han jugado, eh, si han hecho campeonatos europeos o mundiales eh, en... En Colombia hay una liga femenina muchísimo más grande. Tenemos dos chicas colombianas tratando de atacar la defensora que llegó justito, la portera que está haciendo el relevo. Y eh, esa están tratando de interceptar los pases, pero están ya llegando tarde. No sé si están viendo el, el, o sea, cómo van apretando con el ataque. Entonces van llegando cada vez más tarde las jugadoras a hacer los relevos, a estar en posición y eventualmente luego de unos minutos eh, bueno, se produce el gol. Eh, el juego de Colombia se um, caracteriza por mover el balón por delante de la portería de un lado para otro. Es más, el, el juego de Orcas, pero es tendente, o sea, la tendencia del juego colombiano. También atacan mucho a media altura. Uh, what I really uh, like from the from the Colombia style, I mean the, the, the girls, the boys, and also we, we saw it with the juniors last uh, weekend is that they tend to come exactly to this high and uh, they come like in between the defender and the goalie and they're quite effective in uh, scoring <laughs> i can say they're small enough to fit in <laughs> exactly <laughs> well but you know that's the thing we well, were, uh, i mean i think uh, when they attack uh, they, they they make enough uh, power on the attack that the, the defense has really to defend the goal So they are, they are coming with consequence yep. uh, to the attack. They don't stop. Then they make the pass back, controlling the game. They can't going in position. They're looking for this uh, coming. Oh, 
Big and chance. Uh, number uh, the, the the but she come the ball, passing back. The, the, the defender is coming too late. She they control the ball, pass again uh, to the other girl. So it's F at the end of the first uh, half. Yeah, so end of the first half for zero. I I I uh, prospect that it will be five zero the game. So, but I think it even will be higher. So yep. the, the Columbian girls are really. Uh, I was talking Control. with with Piranhas after the game they had against uh, Amager earlier today as we were mm -hmm. talking and they say that they they were really angry on themselves that they even got scored. You remember the last goal was like three seconds before yeah. the end of the game and that the last goals were more because they were lacking the mental strength to dive in. It was not a conditional problem because they said two times ten minutes is really doable and their condition they had trained, but they felt that they could not really make a difference and then uh, they were not really diving in as consequent as before. And this is something that is really relevant for our sport. I mean, of course, mental strength is important in all aspects of life, but if you consider that in rugby we go underwater, so it's against our survival instinct even, because we cannot even breathe, then uh, being able to keep up uh, with uh, the game, even if you are losing, even if you are losing high... Um you cannot breathe underwater? No. And you are still a member of the no, national team? just in case. <laughs> I breathe through don't, my skin. Don't, don't, don't tell your coach about that, that you cannot breathe underwater. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is an obvious AT <laughs> thing, but I was trying to, uh, to, to bring the idea. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's, um, it's, um, it's amazing, you know, um, that, that how important it is to really also do, tra I mean, do mental training. And again, we, ha we discussed that uh, in the academy uh, on Thursday with the captain of the U21, I mean, with the head coach, actually, with, with Jorge Franco. He has been doing uh, this mental training since 2015, and it's very effective, and he shares some uh, tools with us, and it's really, really interesting. So hopefully we can update and, and upload all the videos and the pictures and put that more into our sport because I don't know how many teams really um, put the energy and the time of uh, doing mental training. I mean, it's more common in other sports, but for us it's developing uh, slowly. It's uh, always a question of uh, time and money and to do that. Uh, if you have enough things uh, around them, so it's uh, also how consequent you can be yeah. with your team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that it's always uh, somehow look for the German uh, national team in soccer. They no, have. Th to I'm so. I'm like, I can't believe it. They're they have now ha have to have established rules that the players are not allowed to use their mobile phone during uh, the, the dinner the and the lunch. The so that means on the on the controversial side that they are spend more time on their mobile phone than with their teammates. So how yep, are you exactly. Well they huh? have that uh, yeah, exactly. And then uh, you are lacking the communication and the team building by connecting. Anyway, it's a big big subject. Um we can talk hours about it. But let's go back to the game. I mean again we can see that the, the uh, Castores they are pressing more and more. We have seen also with other uh, games that they start a little bit farther also with the Swedish girls and eventually on the second half they are like on th all the time on the goalie and uh, on the defender. They, they, they especially they are... <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. So basically uh, um, they are very close to the goal, so they're dominating yep. the mm -hmm. area. Even uh, they are not going back to the second line; they are just around yep. the first Definitely. line, mm -hmm. and there they're controlling the game. Yep. They're controlling yep. the passing. Yep. Uh, and this is very impressive. Yep. Uh, they, they are so near around the goal and so right behind the defender yeah. and everything. And I mean, and goal. goal. I mean, it's it's very very effective. So if you in the position to 
control the ball so near on the goal. There's no space for a defender to jump no. into the uh, position. So yeah. that and they create a lot of mental st uh, stress for the for the players because they they are all the time uh, late and all the time reacting and then eventually they don't know anymore what to do and that's they it. They did not see where the ball is. Mm -hmm. So that is. Now we have, uh, they but they play fair. They are not doing any kind of fall or anything. I mean, they. Um I'm I'm very impressed how Nero now now yeah. around the goal they play and control the ball they never give up the ball they 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 intercept the ball quite quickly taking the room supporting each other coming close again and something like that it's it's very close but i'm always afraid that they, they they're get going to lose the ball in front of them yeah. but they really control and the the piranhas had no chance no. to to interfere in this and uh, another and goal. Another goal. It's, uh, so it seems that uh, the piranhas just following uh, the ball, but they cannot really can attack them. But I, you know, I have the the feeling that you know yeah today when they play against um the danish team they were losing well this is the time where they broke and suddenly they started getting more scores until they were 11 0. Uh, so let's see if they can keep up uh, this m mental concentration mental focus lo que estábamos diciendo para la gente de habla hispana es que es increíble como las chicas de castores van presionando van acercando y ahora en estos minutos están todavía más cerca están directamente pegadas a la portería directamente debajo del, del, del portero detrás del defensor y no le dan capaz o sea no las chicas de piranha están reaccionando y no tienen tiempo de ubicarse no tienen tiempo de realmente tomar una pausa de ver dónde está el balón de tener calma en el juego sino que todo el tiempo están corriendo detrás de la jugadora de castores que eventualmente fuerzan tanto la falda que van a ir haciendo goles nosotros las chicas de piranha jugaron antes con eh, contra las de dinamarca y venían más o menos con la misma diferencia de goles se hicieron en esta en este parte del partido faltando cinco minutos para que termine y, y en los últimos cinco minutos metieron como cinco goles las chicas de dinamarca y yo hablando con las chicas de piranha decían bueno realmente los últimos cinco minutos se nos hicieron largos otro gol de castores y realmente ya teníamos dificultad y más que nada mental no no de condición física de bajar porque era como bueno era muy duro el juego y bueno y hasta nos dio mucha bronca que el último gol fue a dos o tres segundos antes de terminar el partido así que bueno vamos a ver que está pasando algo similar I just repeat what we discussed in English for the um, Spanish speaking community you repeat uh, in Spanish in Spanish yeah so they know what we're talking about just yeah. in case you said English just too much oh okay you know, you know what it means. I'm confusing Lorena, sorry for that. <laughs> you know, oh. I have a double function. I'm, I'm her coach and her co commenter. Um, I like both. And she knows that she will get pressure in January anyway. <laughs> oh, that's empty goal, goal and an empty so basket. That was a. Uh, um so the speed goes up. Yep. So that you could see they try to attack uh, the the castores gold the piranhas but this makes the situation much more open so if you have a, uh, a strategy or game strategy never changes never try something else yep. it doesn't will work out Correct. so if you do try to do something else it will be just dangerous um attack from the piranhas at least they come in the half of the castores but uh, compared to the castores uh, their bow position is not very strong counter attack through the whole pool uh, two castores uh, uh, attacking pass short pass again short pass and goal so this is fast underwater rugby yep as it should be impressive speed and i'm always afraid that they lose the ball near to the goal yep but it doesn't that it doesn't lose the ball so 
I think it's really it's, it's, control, it's, yeah. it's, it's really intentionally. Yeah. Yes, so yes, I mean, they're passing the ball. In the, the beginning, ball. it looks like, oh, they have a hell of luck, but no. no. no, no. Uh, so it's I'm very impressive how close Castores uh, controlled the ball around the opponent's goal. Goal, they're doing the fast attack, they're going on the, on the bottom, they attack, they're putting enough power. The defense. Uh, oh, yeah, she should have been lying on two. Uh, she left so a big gap there. Uh, so it's uh, two minutes, uh, around 35 seconds left in this game, and it's 10-0 again for the Castores, yeah. and uh, they continue to show their high performance in the game. The same what they did uh, against uh, the Black Mermaids. So we have now timeout white so maybe now to try to get a little bit of uh, air and try to think and maybe try to keep try to more digest the 10 zero yeah yeah to yes mentally have to digest and and be That's willing to uh, continue with the fight don't name it take a timeout doesn't matter anymore just well, again, it's, it's a new it. team, and because it's a new team, and uh, it's a lot, it's, it's, it's about practice for them. These games, they know they won't win. In these games, uh, it's about to um, try to keep the game and defend and what they can, the best they can play. And actually, yesterday they won 4-0. And this is look, I forgot to mention this. They lost. They won 4-0 against the Singapore team. This is the first time a Piranha women team has won a game in the Champions Cup since they've been participating since maybe 10, 15 years. So, ayer Piranhas ganó por primera vez en la Champions Cup un partido que fue 4-0 contra el equipo de Singapur. So, you see, there was the, uh, 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 how you say, uh, a folk, a lepnis, um, uh, success a success story. Yeah. We call it success story. A happy end story. <laughs> happy end story is something <laughs> else. Don't say that. <laughs> please, please, please be political correct. Okay, it was a success it was story. It's call a it a success story. story. And we have the Castores attacking. <laughs> <from home. laughs> so and. Um, oh my god. Uh, coming back to the game. The Castores dominating the game. Their passing is. Uh, uh, still quite accurate. They try to stay out of the cluster. They're still keeping the ball. If they're in the cluster, and most probably they control the ball. It's 1 minute 20 seconds. They're leading 10 0. So they're getting the ball in control, number 23. So time is ticking down. So, uh, But they continue to, to attack and they bring enough for pressure me to the yeah. attack. But for me, if, if Piranhas really manage uh, to keep 10-0 until the end of the game, that would be also a success story for them. Because this is something they couldn't achieve against Denmark, and this is something I can see that they're willing to achieve, and probably they, they had the, the, the um, uh, timeout uh, because of this reason. And you can see that they're a little bit more determined and a little bit more focused on the game. And because I don't think the Castores uh, are slowing down their game at all. So it's 30 seconds. I really wish for them that they can keep 10-0, but it doesn't look like that. Ay, 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 ay. A ver, vamos a ver las chicas de Piranha. Veo que están queriendo mantener el 10-0, pero bueno, nada, no ha podido ser. Uh, it was worth trying 15 seconds, but they keep for two minutes uh, on 10. I mean, that's also... Uh, uh, and uh, um, success. Um, you because you are used to have top teams in your hands, and it's always on the first or the second place. That you know these teams are uh, fighting hard, and well, they have to have other other goals than we have. Anyway, eh, bueno, un juego muy lindo de Piranhas. Han tratado de, de mantener el marcado lo que más eh, pudieron, pero bueno, 11 a 0 ha terminado el partido, y lo mismo que contra el equipo de Dinamarca. Y ahora vamos a seguir con los hombres. Let's see. We have Piranhas Peñafiel, the male team coming up. So I'm going to stay speaking Spanish a little bit. And then we have uh, Vin in blue. 
and piranhas and white. So the same. The piranhas, the, the women just playing white. A ver, están las familiares de la gente de Piranhas aquí eh, alentando al equipo. Viena, let me see the team list. A ver, vamos a ver. <coughs> Let's see the players. Vamos a ver. Vin. Tenemos. Número uh, one, Andreas Schneiderbauer. Number two, Andreas Tanzmann. Number three, Matthias Neunteufel. Neun That's an interesting name. Four, Matthias Wurm. Marcus Wimmer, number five. Six, Peter Meresek. Seven, Juan Erazo. Eight, Ulrich Pond. A ver, no. Seven, Juan Erazo. Eight, yeah, Ulrich Pond. Nine, uh, Boris Weisenberg. Ten, Jan Uwe Wiesner. 11, Peter Karlskrüger, 12, Jan Kindermann, 13, Thorsten Lütke, 14, Baldwin Landl, and Thomas Denk, number 15, and the Piranhas. Let me go through the names. A ver. Piranhas Peña Fiel, number 1, 1, Jorge Vázquez, number 2, 2, Alberto. Number three, tres, Álvaro. Number four, cuatro, José Ramón. Number five, cinco, Alessandro. Six, seis, Pablo. Seven, siete, José Manuel. Eight, ocho, Laura. Nueve, nine, uh, Rubén. Ten, diez, Isaac. Eleven, once, Laura Vallejo. Twelve, doce, Daniel Alonso. 13, trece, Montserrat, fourteen, catorce, Carolina Cata, eighteen, dieciocho, Francisco. There are four women playing with the Piranhas male team uh, in this championship. Maybe they should play in the, ma uh, the female team. They do the play too, they play in the double. Both? Yeah. Oh, yeah. impressive. Yeah, impressive, yeah. They are playing that. They are the most experienced uh, uh, players they have. Some of them have been playing since... Cata, for instance, she's Colombian. She has been, you know, emigrated to Spain and then to France, but she has been playing rugby probably over 20 years or so. And Monse, I believe, 15 years. So they are, you know, um, supporting both female and male teams. So respect. Okay, I take a break. I will look for another commentator. I, I think the there was one of the Austrian. Um, that wanted to comment, but yeah. I don't know, yeah, of course, uh, Lisa or Wolf, and thank you so much, York. Yeah, I will coming back, uh, maybe today or tomorrow. Perfect. We thank have a lot you. of great games coming up. Bueno, a ver, ¿cómo vamos? Vina, ich habe nichts Deutsch gesprochen, also lass, uh, lass uns schauen, wie die Mannschaft von Wien gegen Piranha spielen wird. Um, ich, kann, ich würde fast sagen, dass Wien vielleicht Favorit für dieses Spiel ist und uh, lass uns schauen, wie uh, die Männer von Piranhas und der spanischen Mannschaft sich quasi anpassen können an das Wiener Spiel. Die Wiener sind uh, mehr erfahren, also haben schon in der Champions League, um, sorry, in der Euro League uh, gespielt und das hat uh, den auch uh, vorangebracht in den Spielen. Und Piranhas hat nicht so viel Erfahrung äh, international. So, ah, we're having the new... Isn't it possible to print it even smaller? Yeah, no, I, I told him, I said, we have, to, uh, we have to plan for the referees, but it's printed so small, uh, we have difficulty seeing it, but uh, we have to <laughs> save <laughs> paper. Um, yeah, I'm Wolf back um, again here. And uh, so happy to be with you back again here, Lorena. We have now. Um, this is uh, Vienna. Uh, Vienna. Si. Uh, Vienna. Okay. Is this uh, still the quarterfinal? No. This is SF nine minus A, and I have no idea what that exactly means. Cool. I was trying to. And it looks like uh, Vienna is in the dark. Ah, semi-finals. That's what it semifinal. says. SF. I was thinking ah, SF, 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 science fiction, science fiction I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I own a science fiction bookshelf <laughs> and Lorena is thinking at science fiction at SF at once. So we're back in the game. Hey, uh, Joy Dodo Jr. I don't know, you know what language is used most in Euro Leagues rugby after English? English. Probably German. I think, I think English. No, but after English. Yeah, English. Well, 
No, I think German because we have a big league, so probably, but I'm not sure. In the Euro League. Ah, in the Euro League. I thought that in the, the, the in the leagues that are played along uh, across in Europe. Euro leagues uh, rugby. Yeah, Euro after leagues English. rugby. The Euro League or in the leagues? Well, the biggest mm -hmm. uh, the biggest uh, portion of players or the, the most players in the in the in the European country are in Germany. We have about uh, five thousand uh, underwater rugby players, and. Uh, Probably that's the biggest uh, on the yeah. water rugby country in yeah. Europe, but uh, if you mean the Euro League, like the Euro Euro League, um, mm, they no. have uh, many teams, and I think they have uh, two Danish teams, two German teams. So yeah. Norwegian, Sweden, Joy, Georgia Junior, Castores, Cano sobre Orcas in Colombia. Sí, they have I think tres paradas. Y ganaron, creo, eh, tiene que haber ganado una más que, eh, que, que Orcas. Si hay alguna gente de Castores, quizás nos expliquen, pero si yo no entendí mal, creo que han ganado dos sobre tres o hacen por puntos. A ver, que alguno explique. Thank you very much.